My plan is to finish the first zone and then make a demo out of an eye on for that. Shouldn't take that long to finish one zone. Hello, Kayakus here. It has been quite a while since the last Mendasium devlog, a year and three months to be exact. People have already started asking me if I quit the project or gave up, and luckily for everybody, I didn't. There has been so much going on from that point, like making the whole Ruins of Albion game and release it on Steam, working on my bachelor project Virium that took like good 4-5 to five months, finishing my university, getting a full-time job, and a bunch of personal life stuff. But despite everything, I was still working on Mendasium here and there in the background, and I have been focusing on it from the moment I finished my university in March. There have been a lot of changes, reworks, direction changes, and overall improvements that I will have to split this devlog in two parts, since there is that much information. So let's not waste any more time and jump straight into action. The most obvious new addition is a completely different main character. From the beginning of the project, I was never a big fan of how Kaikus looks in the game. I like the fact that he has a blindfold, but he always seemed kinda naked and without much character. I initially intended for the character to be white, since it will be easier to see him on most of the backgrounds, and because of the lore reasons, considering the fact that white represents innocence. Another thing that bothered me was the overall animation process that I was using for my characters and enemies in general. Since I don't really know how to do hand-drawn frame-by-frame animation, I used to have all of the characters separated into multiple sprites and animating different parts individually. The biggest problem with this approach is that you cannot really get that 3D feeling and depth since the characters cannot change their perspective. So considering that I don't know how to draw perspective and the success I had with Ruins of Albion 3D enemy creation and animation, I decided to have all of my characters and enemies in 3D instead of 2D. With that decision made, I started by drawing some concepts and trying to make Kayakus more interesting. The cube was changed from the generic blue color to the more purple, representing arcane magic, since I was planning to add elements and spell types into the game. There was another really big problem that stopped me from progressing for a long time, and that is the main reference for the people that are living in this world. Let's be honest, they are random white blobs without any character and they look like garbage. Having a main source of inspiration can help designing the characters themselves, but also the world around them. Just take a look at Hollow Knight, the characters are all based on bugs and insects, which then influences the design of the kingdom and makes the whole world more coherent. Characters and enemies represent various different bugs, the kingdom is made from dead bug shells, and houses and places are representing eggs or cocoons. So coming back to the updated concept for the player character, I realized that there has to be a complete redesign if I'm aiming to get to the level that I want. After a long time searching and trying to figure out if it's even worth continuing this project or not, I found something interesting. Reptiles. Hear me out, they are cool, there's a lot of different species of snakes, turtles, geckos, lizards, and even some form of dinosaurs and dragons. They have a strong connection to water, which is kinda important considering that the game theme is creation of life, as well as the fact that they are not overused in other games like birds and foxes for example. What really did it for me was the discovery of these mega cute concepts of RPG reptiles that I found on DeviantArt. This, combined with a lot of cool designs and ideas from Yu-Gi-Oh cards and World of Warcraft, made me proudly say Yep, 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 this is it, this has potential. With this newly found motivation, I started drawing concepts and came to this version of the player character. I instantly made the 3D model 
and all of the necessary animations and I immediately fell in love with how smooth this character feels to control. The biggest benefit of 3D models is that I can rotate the character when jumping or when switching sides, which makes the character not feel like a flat JPEG. With 3D models, I can abuse cloth simulation for Scarf, as well as my favorite thing from when I worked on Virium, and that is procedural animation and dump and movement for the trails. I'm quite happy with the character right now, as it manages to be a reptile, to look interesting enough with the Scarf and the Arcane Tesseract Cube, and to be cute while still looking like he knows what he's doing. Playing with the new character as well as theory crafting interesting upgrades and effects exposed another big problem that was there from the beginning. The fact that the boomerang cube attacks are really boring. The cube is kinda unique but it doesn't really feel as satisfying as it should and can get quite annoying since you always have to wait for the cube to come back which serves as your attack speed. I couldn't really come up with any interesting effects that would make the combat more interesting and there is no real reason for the cube to behave like this. It would make sense if there was a whole mechanic that you have to hit something from the behind, but for that to work, the range would have to be increased drastically, as well as the time it takes for the cube to come out and back, which feels quite bad due to a really low attack speed. After a lot of thinking and coming up with different ideas, I stopped in one moment and asked myself why am I overcomplicating this so much? I'm trying to figure out the new revolutionary combat system while having a really nice and interesting one in Ruins of Albion that is literally begging me to expand on it. So that's exactly what I did. I stole the combat idea from my own game, Ruins of Albion, together with other stuff like rune circles for castings and shooting, spell elements, arcane magic for the main character, and now we have something like this. The coolest thing about Ruins of Albion combat for me was the blend between melee and ranged attacks. So now you have a certain amount of ammo, 4 for now, and you can shoot arcane missiles and be a proper ranged character. The last shot is dealing double damage because I was always a big fan of that thing that Jin has in League of Legends, and when you spend your whole ammo, your attacks become melee. When you hit the target with the melee attack, you will recharge your ammo. The idea is to provide a combat that has some depth as well as focus primarily on range combat, but still provide that melee slash that people seem to really like in Metroidvanias nowadays. I am really happy with this design especially because everything is still bound to a single button, which I think makes it quite clean. I have to mention that just by switching from boomerang cube to actual shots enabled me to make the shots 10 times more satisfying to use. And yes, for those who are wondering, you can actually bounce and pogo yourself like in Hollow Knight with both melee and ranged attacks. With the boomerang mechanic removed, the heal mechanic was again a mystery. Before, you had to hold the attack button and after a short period of time, the energy will be spent and the next attack will become green. Hitting the enemy with this would just heal you. Although this was kinda fine on keyboard and mouse, it was super annoying to do on controller because you constantly have to hold an attack button while jumping and moving around and you can even miss the attack and not get the heal at all. Not to mention the energy problem that Hollow Knight also has, which is the fact that abilities and heal are sharing the same resource. That means that an average player will most likely never use an ability because they just want to save energy for healing. Knowing all of that, the first major iteration was that the melee attack would heal you. This would include the heal into that single attack button as well and remove the energy cost since spending ammo and getting to the melee attack is a cost enough. This seemed like a genius idea in my head, but then I realized that it makes the gameplay quite monotone and linear. Whenever you are fighting, you will shoot all of the ammo and then slash the enemy with the melee, whether or not you want to heal. There is no moment where you are deciding to deal damage or specifically risk to get a heal. Everything is done by that core combat loop of shooting, getting close and then recharging. So the final iteration is that whenever you deal damage to an enemy, you will get two different resources. One that is the ability energy and the other that is healing energy, which is calculated in the background so that the player is not overwhelmed with all the information and different bars that he has to fill in. When the threshold is met, you can get a heal charge, which can stack up to two times. I had to move 
the heal to a separate button because it just feels like you have more control like if you want to heal you press a button in this case when you press a heal it will use up all of the heal charges available necessary to heal you to the maximum this means if you have two heal charges and only one missing health the heal will only use up one charge and heal you for one but if you are missing more it will use up all of the charges and of course you are not able to heal if you are at full health the heal itself is kinda instant no holding to charge or something like that clicking a button will just cast a heal this as well as all of the other castings will hold you in the air which can be used to dodge some attacks sometimes next up we have a hook shot i think that this has a lot of potential since it gives you an option to hook yourself anywhere and aim 360 degrees however i feel like it will either be too broken and make other movement options useless or it will be too boring and constrained that is the initial reason why i made it so that you can aim it anywhere since adding a special hook point somewhere is quite limiting for the player because you are relying on the level designer to give you interesting points to hook to so in order to make this ability special, I decided that it will become the main ability of the game. I started by adding a slight push upwards whenever you pull yourself somewhere, since that is kinda what I was doing the whole time initially, to climb ledges and walls, but I was just using a double jump. This makes it easier to get wherever you want to go and it feels much better overall. Then I added the option to hook yourself to the enemies. If you hook to the enemy, you will not take collision damage, but you will be pushed backwards and kinda recoil from the enemy itself. After doing this, the next attack you do will crit for double damage. The next attack will also be auto-aimed at that enemy so that you cannot really miss, which is quite an important quality of life addition. This hookshot is quite insane now in my opinion, it enables fun and interesting travel for the world, bonus damage against enemies, and even makes the flying enemies easier to fight since you can pull yourself towards them. It even makes the melee slash easier to use since you can quickly get in range for it. However, there is still a skill requirement since you are not invincible while pulling yourself, so you can easily fly directly into a projectile if you are not careful. There is even more skill expression with the double damage bonus since a good player will really try to use the last fourth shot with this double damage to deal really a lot of damage. With all of this the hook shot might seem a little bit too broken compared to the dash or double jump since the moment you get it you are able to reach most of the places in the game. And I actually think that's quite an interesting approach to a metroidvania level design. In most metroidvania games the player gets more and more abilities that open up more and more of the world, but what if you can change that a little bit and approach the level design as an open world 2D game? You will get the hookshot in the first zone and from there you can access most of the other zones. You will still have your dashes, double jumps and other abilities, but they will be mostly there to just give you more movement options and not block parts of the game. I said most of the other zones because there still has to be some parts of the game that are available later. But that will be handled in another way that I might explain in the future if it's not too much of a spoiler. Another big change was the decision to separate dash into two different abilities, roll and an air dash. Having a dash seems quite essential and playing the game without it can feel quite slow. That's why I am giving the player a roll that can be only performed on the ground as a baseline ability available from the start. The roll will also make you invincible so that you can roll through the enemies to dodge attacks. Usually the combat and the enemy design in games gets interesting when the player gets some movement abilities since just jumping over an enemy is not the most exciting thing ever. This should make the combat more interesting from the start while having an air dash as a separate ability that can be unlocked later and that can still lock out some places that would require a hookshot and the air dash to reach. Now we can move on to the most important system of the game, the power system. The previous iteration had 4 rows of runes and you were able to only select one in each row. The runes are kinda like your charms in Hollow Knight, giving you some interesting effects and bonuses. On top of that, the player was also able to equip one special ability from free at the time, which were shooting a projectile, setting a trap or channeling and reflecting every enemy projectile for a couple of seconds. None of this really matters anymore because the whole system was reworked completely. 
there are still two main mini systems runes and abilities runes are still like charms in hollow knight each rune has a value assigned to it to help with balancing between the same set of runes as well as the type being either red blue or yellow red runes focus on offensive blue ones on defensive and yellow on utility with all of that the player can unlock different rune circles that have different layouts of rune types as well as circle capacity completing the circle by having all of the rune slots filled out as well as the full capacity will provide the player with a unique powerful passive effect on top of this there are two additional slots that the player can assign abilities to meaning you will always have two chosen abilities on top of everything else these abilities have many different effects and usages as well as different damage types like fire frost shadow and so on which should perform better or worse against certain enemies and bosses currently i have around 15 of these abilities and i am not planning to stop adding them we will see how many will be there till the end for now there are projectiles like pyroblast a long cast massive damage ability or a boomerang holy orb or arcane missiles bombs that explode for massive damage or spawn poison clouds buffs like fire orbs that shoot a nearby target and icicles that fire off when you hit an enemy fire orbs might be one of my favorites since they are auto attacking enemies that are close to you but they can be used with the hook shot to just explode the enemy other interesting effects like an orb that copies all of your shots meaning that it will copy everything and all of the upgrades and effects that you have to your basic attacks finally with all of this i had to add actual damage numbers as well as the crit numbers for more juice which are showing different damage types in different colors i really like to see exactly how much damage i am doing in the games but of course i know some people don't really like these things and there might be too much information on the screen so there will be an option to disable all of the numbers so overall in the game you will have your heal switch between melee and basic attacks hookshot in vulnerability dash and other abilities rune effects that would be combined with different rune circles for passive effects and two abilities that you can choose that are having their own energy bar and are not interfering with healing i don't know about you but i really like this system and i believe that it has a lot of potential it might it seem a little bit complicated but i feel most of the systems feel like this when you try to explain them in the detail and i can assure you that actually playing with this is quite straightforward but as always leave your thoughts about it in the comments below i'm really curious to hear what you think about this type of a system this is where i will stop for now in the next part we are going to take a look at more artistic changes as well as how i'm managing all of the data in this type of game but that's it, I'm done, and until next time.